All right, guys, Good Boy 32 here checking out. So we're sitting out here in the Freedom Shack. And uh, before we get started with the overview of this Strike Industries rifle build, I want to talk to you about some stuff that's coming up in the upcoming future. We are going to be testing out uh, some rifle rounds that will work best in the Elite build and in the uh the, the, the what do you call it the most not the expensive inexpensive build uh both of those are my competition ross demon r build it's a 20 inch proof research barrel as well as the uh, 16 inch that's my three gun rifle and what i'm trying to do is develop a perfect load that matches that's those specific rifles using the 75 grain boat hollow point also we're going to go ahead and throw some of this uh, 69 grain uh, hollow point boat tail uh, from sierra and uh but that's going to be a lot of fun but then what we're going to do is we're going to take uh, uh, all the rounds, 73, 75, 77 grain, from the different manufacturers to see which one of the manufacturers fits best for each one of those rifles. Then we're going to go ahead and bring the hand loads in. We're going to test those out. Then we're going to take the hand load that works best, and we're going to compete against the manufacturers. It's going to be a lot of fun. Back to having fun about rifles. So anyway, let's talk about the Strike Industries build. Now, a bunch of guys had a lot of questions, and rightfully so. One of the guys had a question about the seven position uh, handguard on here, uh, well, the buffer tube, and will it work with the this guy right here, the, uh, what do you call this thing, the tail end plate with the uh, QD mount. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna pop this thing on here. Let's see, I don't know why that came off. Probably because I had it off. But what we want to do is I'm going to bring it out. There's one, two, three, four, five, and that's it. So we've got five positions. We're going to give up two positions when you use this tailpiece right here. Uh, but you are getting three attachment points. Uh, not to mention, also, the little slots in here are set up to be utilized or used with a regular armor's wrench. Uh, I did not test it with the oppressor on here because this is going to have its own uh, series. This is a really, really cool deal for those guys that are, uh, want to use a competition-style muzzle brake, but when you're shooting from a bench, when you got people on either side of you and you don't want to, uh, just let's just say, be that bothersome person, this will take care of that issue for you, projecting the sound downrange. Now, uh, JB Razor, good friend of mine, one of the things that he's always pointed out is flexing of the handguard. Now, this handguard, this is their gridlock. I am a big fan. Uh, I like the way it feels in the hand. It is really buffy, beefy, whatever you want to call it. But a lot of people had some concerns with this QD portion right here, as well as the two screws, the set screws on either side, thinking it would mar up their uh, upper receiver. Got to be honest with you, I'm, the marring of the upper receiver is least of my worries. The biggest thing I'm concerned about is flex. So one of the things that I have found is that that handguard, it doesn't go anywhere. What does flex is the barrel, and you want that. It needs to have that movement in there for the harmonics. Nice thing is, is this, with this big handguard, you don't have to worry about that uh, gas block coming in contact with it. But I will tell you this, that's a the handguard in itself, and it should be for as heavy as it is, it is very, very stiff. Now we went ahead and put this thing on the M4E1 upper and lower receiver set using an error precision uh, buffer. I mean, what do you call that thing? A bolt carrier grip with the uh, nickel boron. And it, it performed flawlessly. Also, we're using a Timmy trigger. This is like their three and a half pound deal here. Very nice. Reset on that guy is perfect. You know, regardless of what trigger you want to put in, what we're talking about is basically the setup here. Uh, the, the Strike Industries, this is their Viper, I think, uh, stock. <laughs> The rifle as a whole, I think, is out of balance with, with the use of this stock, okay? Uh, I think that with something a little bit more substantial, plus we are going with an 18-inch barrel out here, this is a minimalist-style stock, but it's a very minimal stock. Is it something that matches this rifle? Does it provide for the balance of the rifle? I don't think so. 
I mean, you could bring it all the way out, but I would like to have something just a little bit more substantial on this rifle as the build. The buffer tube system, absolutely perfect. Let me show you guys. That thing has done very, very nice. Uh, the buffer system, the buffer system, that's the gold thing that we were talking about with the twist tightening and the, and the different weights, and you can do it. Um, right now, I've, I'm overgassed just a tad. Uh, we're shooting a little bit out to about the 2 o'clock position. I would like to get that back to the 3 o'clock position. One of the things we will talk about in the near future are buffers, buffer weights, and what that will do to a standard rifle. Okay, And it's going to be a lot of fun in doing that. Uh, the grip that we're using is from Strike Industries. This is their 20 degree grip. They do provide them in three different uh, angles in degrees. All right, so what we were talking about, the rifle itself performed flawlessly. Uh, one of the other options that we didn't really cover on this was the uh, Strike Industries, their charging handle. This is their latchless charging handle. Um, I would say for 25 bucks, this is probably one of the best charging handles out there. It's got little springs on the interior of it, so there's nothing on the outside but it performed flawlessly. Uh, the lower parts kit, Strike Industries, were probably one of my favorites out there. Uh, I love the, the takedown pins, the ambidextrous, as long as you make sure you don't over tighten those screws and you put some blue Loctite on those, you're not gonna have any issues out of them. This rifle is a keeper. I am uh, gonna keep this guy. Uh, one of the cool things is, is also it works well with this reticle. Uh, one of the things I would like to do in the near future, after we get a couple of these loads managed out, I want to chrono it, and we'll go ahead and tag this and build a history with this rifle. And that's what I do with all my rifles. Guys, uh, I have little name tags, and I put them on there, and I, I wrap them around the trigger guard right here, and it has what bullet, what zero uh, distance is, what bullet weight works well with it, um, what is it good out to, what optic does it work well with. I mean, right here... Uh, one of the next rifle builds, the Everyday Joe, is going to get this guy right here. This is the primary, you know guys, I'm a primary arms. This is the Aurora uh, 556. So that's going to work out well. We do have another upcoming program. One of the budget builds we did, we're going to replace the barrel that was on the budget build with this guy right here. This is a uh, Ballistic Advantage. This is their 18-inch 1 and 8 twist. Stainless steel 416. And I can't wait to put this on there and see that rifle improve because three to five, five inches is what I was getting even with 77 grain. So that's it. My uh, my impressions of the Strike Industries build is it sits right here. I like it. I would like to put something a little bit more substantial out on the back of it to uh, give it a little bit more balance with the rifle. Not to worry, we're going to be uh, moving forward with another Strike Industries build series uh, with a little bit something shorter. And this one will probably be well suited to be on there. Uh, yeah, and this scope is going to stay on this rifle for the meantime. So anyway, guys, if you have any other questions, please don't hesitate in asking. We will be doing a independent review of the oppressor right here. This thing is really cool. It goes on just like that. And then you twist it in. And it locks into place. It's perfect. That's it. Guys, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. Support the red, white, and blue. God bless America. God bless those men, women, in uniform 24-7 for our freedom. Because sometimes when you're out there hunting for freedom, you got to reach out and touch it at about five or 600 yards. It's Coda Boy 32. God bless America. I already did that. Uh, Y'all be good. I'll talk to you later. Bye. It's a nice rifle.